hello students so this is the last part last lecture of unit 4 that is semiconductor physics uh, unit and uh, in this uh, part we will see number of derivations uh, different mathematical expressions so that's why i have kept this part at the last okay so yesterday in part 2 we have seen energy band diagrams uh, for semiconductors for intrinsic semiconductor extrinsic semiconductor after that we have seen the meaning of fermi level for conductors the meaning of fermi energy for conductors then we have seen probability distribution uh, probability distribution function given by fermi dirac statistics after that we have seen fermi level uh, position for n type semiconductors for p type semiconductors and for intrinsic semiconductors in intrinsic semiconductors the fermi level uh, Fermi uh, level uh, always lies at the middle of the gap. For n-type semiconductors, it is just below the conduction band. In p-type semiconductors, it is just above the valence band. That we have seen. After that, we have seen the working of p-n junction in unbiased, forward bias, and uh, reverse bias case on the basis of energy band diagrams. So when the uh, one half of this uh, semiconducting material is dropped in donor impurity. and other half with acceptor impurities you will have pn junction created at the junction boundary of these two materials okay so as the concentration of electrons is not same or as the fermi level position throughout the material is not same because fermi level is just below the conduction band on n side it is just above the valence band on p side so as the fermi level position is not same throughout the material in order to equalize the fermi level position electrons from n side they will move towards p side and uh, when the fermi level gets adjusted uh, the conduction and valence band of n side it will move down with respect to conduction valence band of p side and an energy barrier of height e b b is created at the junction okay so as this energy barrier height is created the electrons majority charge carriers of the two side they are not able to overcome it and hence uh, there is no current in the device so in order to have this current we are connecting the device either in forward bias or in reverse bias when it is connected in forward bias the energy barrier height will reduce uh, by an amount e b where v is the external voltage and hence the majority of charge carriers of the two sides they are able to overcome it and the current is due to majority charge carriers in the reverse bias if the external voltage is v the energy barrier height it will increase to e v b plus e b uh, so in that case the majority charge carriers of the two side they are not able to overcome it but the minority charge carriers of the two side they can fall on to the other side and you will get current due to minority charge carriers so that we have seen in the yesterday's lecture yesterday's part uh, now i am starting in continuation with that uh, some derivations i am starting we will see uh, we will derive the expression for barrier voltage uh, for a p n junction taps okay Uh, so you know that the concentration of in p n junction the concentration of electrons uh, in uh, p and n region is different it is very large in number in uh, this uh, Uh, n region it is very less in p region so this barrier potential expression it is derived uh, by knowing the concentration of electrons always remember here we are considering electrons in the p and n region okay and again from that fermi dirac statistics the concentration of electrons in the conduction band of n side this is given by this expression here it is written nc is equal to n e to the power minus eg minus ef upon kt what is this eg it is the energy gap of the material if the p n junction if it is made from silicon it is 1.1 if it is made from uh, germanium it is 0.72 electron volt okay ef is the fermi level position okay which is again constant uh, for this n type okay k is the boltzmann constant so the uh, n is the total number of electrons in that material free electrons in that material okay so out of n nc are going are in the n region okay due to energy gap of ev in between p and n region Uh, we can write on p side uh, we can write the uh, uh, electron concentration this is p side and this n represent the concentration of electrons on p, uh, p side the number of electrons present are equal to n e to the power minus of uh, there is a barrier potential uh, of energy barrier height of evb so uh, the conduction band of p side is above the uh, conduction band of n side by this factor eg plus evb okay where eg is the energy gap here in this figure you can see that okay it is just the uh, lowest uh, uh, level of conduction band it is just at the height of the highest level of valence of valence band of the p side okay so the energy difference between the lowest level of conduction band of p side and the lowest level of conduction band of n side that energy difference is eg plus evb because energy gap in 
this between the two is Eg. Okay. So accordingly, you will get this concentration of electrons on the p side as this factor. Uh, thus, to uh, obtain the barrier potential, in this uh, expression we are having Vb value. Okay. So in order to obtain the barrier potential, dividing this Nc by Np, you will get this uh, Nn will get cancelled. So you will get e to the power minus Eg minus Cf upon Kt upon e to the power minus Eg plus Eb minus Cf upon Kt. Okay. So some of the factors will get cancelled. For example, Eg minus Cf will get cancelled, and you will get 1 upon e to the power minus EVB upon KT. So that minus EVB upon KT when it is going in numerator the power will become positive. Okay. So if I am taking the this is e to the power on right hand side and left hand side I am having NC upon MP. So on taking the natural log of both the side you will get VP is equal to directly. You can solve this. The natural log of E is 1 ln e to the base e is 1. So you will get VP is equal to KT upon E log of NC upon NP. Okay, so this is in terms of the concentration of electrons on N side and concentration of electrons on P side. Okay, uh, so I want to write, uh, it is not possible to know concentration of electrons. So we can write this in terms of the doping concentration. That is the concentration of donor atoms, concentration of acceptor atoms in this way. For example, if uh, I, I can multiply and divide this NC upon NP by the concentration of force of P region. Okay, so PP it represents the concentration of force of P region. So I am multiplying and dividing by PP in numerator and in same in denominator. Okay, uh, slight uh, printing mistake is there. Now uh, this PP, this second P it is in uh, subscript. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, this we have derived. Actually, the expression is very small, but uh, uh, see uh, when we are doing maths like this, it is slightly difficult for you to understand. Uh, when if I have written it on the board, that will be that will have all easy. So try to solve this expression. Try to derive this expression in your own form or some papers together with this explanation. Okay. So second derivation is for the ideal diode equation. Okay. Uh, so, in this again, the complete equation is derived. What is the meaning of J and all that is described here? So, that I am telling. So, when the diode is forward biased by external voltage V, you know that the energy barrier height at the junction introduces by an amount EV. Okay. Uh, so, if it is reducing uh, majority charge carriers of the two sides, they will move through the junction. So, current through the junction is due to electrons of N side and due to holes of P side. Okay, uh, and on this uh, uh, this majority charge case of the two sides, it is uh, they are moving through the junction. So this um, they are getting energy from the external battery. So we can say that okay, as the electrons are getting uh, this energy from the external battery, uh, their uh, movement or their velocity is getting increased by a factor of e to the power e v by k t, and hence the diffusion current density. Here I am taking current density which is J is equal to I upon A. Current per unit cross sectionality of the material. Okay. So the diffusion current density due to holes of P side and electrons of N side. Again it is given by this formula J H P star. This is the diffusion current density due to external voltage is equal to J H P e to the power E V upon K T. What is J H P? It is the diffusion current in the absence of the external voltage due to holes okay, of P side. Okay, so that is equal to J H N e to the power E V upon K T. What is this J H N? It is the number of holes which are present on N side. Okay, so uh, one um, see current is due to either due to holes or due to electrons. Electrons are always free, they are present in conduction mat. Electrons are there in on P side also, electrons are there on N side also. So in the absence of the uh, external voltage, J, H, P and J, H, N, they reverse the um, current due to holes of N side and current due to uh, holes of P side. So that is, um, and when I am applying external voltage, this current increases by a factor of e to the power E V upon K T. So I am getting diffusion current due to external voltage as this. Uh, formula okay and similarly diffusion current due to uh, electrons 
of the two regions uh, will get increased by a factor of e to the power e v by k t. Okay, so if I am considering concentration of electrons from n side, that current is, inc is increased by j e n e to the power e v by k t. If I am considering electrons of p side, again that current is increased by a factor of e to the power e v by k t. So the diffusion current in presence of external voltage is j e n star is equal to either j e n e to the power e v by k t or j e p e to the power e v by k t. Okay, uh, there it is written here J H P. Okay, and J E N. They are the current densities from the two sides in unbiased mode when it is not connected in external bias. Okay, the net current density across the junction in forward bias. Okay, so if I am uh, connecting when I am connecting the external voltage, see electrons are moving from N side, holes from the P side. So if I want to measure the net current density, I will have to subtract. The initial uh, current due to holes of N side because when the holes are moving from P to N region and if uh, if the initial current from N to P region due to holes was J H N so that part I will have to subtract because that is stopped now okay so the uh, current in forward bias due to holes is J H P star minus J H N what is J H N the current due to holes of N side which were coming through opposite way but now they are stopped because it is connected in forward bias so that is subtracted similarly current due to electrons it is written as jn is equal to jen star the total current when the external voltage is applied minus the current which was due to electrons of p side okay initially so that i have to subtract so if i am doing that i will get jh is equal to uh, jhp star i can write from the above expression in terms of jhn so that i can take that term common okay so jh is equal to jhn in bracket e to the power ev by kt minus 1 and jn is equal to jep again i am writing that star wala um, j in terms of jep okay so jep e to the power ev by kt minus 5 okay so these are the current due to holes and electrons in uh, presence of external voltage okay because we have subtracted the initial part which was there in unbiased mode and thus the total current density in forward bias is j is equal to current due to current density due to electrons plus current density due to holes so i am subtracting these two expression i will get in first bracket j h n minus j p that is the current due to holes of n side and current due to current density due to electrons of p side okay into bracket e to the power e v by k t minus 1 or that is equal to j0 some constant number e to the power e v by k t minus 1 and uh, as uh, current density is equal to uh, uh, current per unit cross sectional area in terms of current uh, if i am putting um, j is equal to i by a j0 is equal to i0 upon a a a will can get cancelled and current is equal to i is equal to i0 e to the power e v by k t minus 1 okay so this is nothing but the current flowing through the junction and i0 was the initial current and when the external voltage applied is v so this equation is called as the uh, forward bias diode equation in case of reverse bias instead of v i will put minus v if the external voltage kept is v okay and in that case i0 will denote the saturation so that way this expression is here again take the notebook and try to do it on your own keeping this slide in front of you and understanding that explanation okay. so now uh, we have uh, left that free electron theory that was the second point of this chapter again okay. uh, some uh, conductivity expressions are there based on this theory that's why i get this uh, in this third video or in this lecture so this theory was given by Drude and Lorentz in the year 1900 and also called as Drude Lorentz theory. Okay, so it is based on following assumptions. In your class standard, you have studied uh, that uh, molecular theory of gases was there. Okay, so Max Maxwell Boltzmann statistics. So just uh, uh, related with that, this theory was given. So according to this theory, in metals or in conductors, the valence electrons are almost free in the material for any temperature t greater than zero. Okay, we are working at t greater than so the valence electrons are almost free in the material so when they are moving freely they are forming electron gas okay so if they are forming electron gas uh, the we can apply maxwell boltzmann statistics which is applicable to gas molecules okay so according to that statistics uh, the kinetic energy of the electrons is given as oh this is equal to i have written that is 3 by 2 into kt 
ओके मल्टीप्लीकेशन है वहाँ पे सो यू हैव टू मल्टीप्लाई थ्री बाई टू के टी वे के इज द बोल्सबन कॉन्स्टेंट एंड थ्री इज द टेम्परेचर सो देयर काइनेटिक एनर्जी इंक्रीजेस विथ टेम्परेचर बट वेन दिस एक्सटर्नल वोल्टेज इज नॉट अप्लाइड द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर मूविंग रैंडमली इन नॉल द डायरेक्शन एंड वेन दे आर मूविंग रैंडमली दे आर कोलाइडिंग विथ हिच अदर सो देर इज नेट फ्लो ऑफ करंट इन इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन वन पर्टिकुलर डायरेक्शन इज जीरो सो देर इज नो करंट ओके बट वेन द एक्सटर्नल वोल्टेज इज अप्लाइड दे विल Uh, they will move through, uh, uh, they will uh, get directed and you will get current from the device. So only in presence of external voltage you will get some current, but uh, if uh, external voltage is not applied, the electrons are moving randomly, uh, randomly, and you will not get any current. Okay. Now again, if the applied, uh, there is an applied voltage where the electrons when they are moving, they are colliding with the positive ions which are there in the material because these valence electrons when they are leaving the atom, they are keeping positive. Uh, charge on that atom, so you are having a lattice of positive ions. So when they are moving, they are colliding with the positive ions of that lattice, and um, so the collision in between uh, the electron, uh, uh, the distance travelled by the electron in between two collision is called as the mean free path, and the time uh, in between that two collision is called as the relaxation time. That is given in fifth point. Okay, so we just go through these points. Uh, now, what happens with the increase in temperature? Of the material, uh, the positive ions they will atoms they starts vibrating about their position. So because of that vibrations, the electrons collision of electrons with that positive ions increases. Okay, and hence if the electrons are continuously colliding with that, uh, so the uh, mean free path of the electrons it gets decrease, and hence the directional flow of electrons gets hindered, and hence the resistance of the material increases. So we said we know that experimentally also it is observed that uh, the resistance of conductors. It increases with temperature. Like this is the increase here that we have seen in superconductivity also. If the resistance increases with the increase in temperature of the conducting materials, okay. Uh, so this is based on that many points. The free electron theory is based on that point. So that was the assumptions. Now there are some advantages and disadvantages of this theory. Uh, now again, this question may be asked for six marks. What is free electron theory? So you'll have to write that on the six points and uh, give its uh, advantages and disadvantages, or maybe called as success or limitations of free electron theory. Okay, so the first we will see the success of free electron theory. So uh, based on this free electron theory, Ohm's law was given. Okay, and which was found to be correct experimentally also. What was Ohm's law? V is equal to I R. When um, the external voltage applied across the material is increased, uh, the current through the material will increase because the resistance at any temperature uh, T, working temperature T, is constant. Okay, uh, this theory was able to explain the electrical and thermal conductivity of the metals correctly. Okay, this theory was explaining optical properties of the metals also correctly, and this theory has given very important relation between the electrical and thermal conductivity of the metals. And what they have observed, we will see what is this Weidmann Franz law. According to uh, the, that law, it is giving the ratio of electrical conductivity to the thermal conductivity. Oh, sorry, the other way, the thermal conductivity to the electrical conductivity ratio, and that ratio is found to be constant, which is equal to log of number. That we will see. <coughs> So these are the advantages of free electron theory, and then limitations are there. So many limitations are there. That's why the next theory was given, uh, but that is not in your syllabus. So there are some disadvantages. Uh, it is it was not able to explain the conductivity of semiconducting and insulating materials, which was known at that time, and uh, it was not able to explain the magnetic properties uh, such as ferromagnetic. properties and paramagnetic susceptibility value was uh, not getting correctly using this theory again the specific heat, heat values experimentally which was observed were not matching with the theoretical results of free electron theory and uh, the weidmann fans law okay that was given but that law was uh, deviated at low temperature it was not giving the experimental values at for low temperatures okay uh, this theory was not able to explain photoelectric effect from the electric field so And that and these are the limitations or disadvantages. Okay. Okay. So next is the Weidmann Franz law. So according to this free electron theory, the electrical and thermal conductivity of metals is due to free electrons, the electrons which are free in the material because they are forming electron gas. Okay. So the ratio of according to this law, the ratio of electronic thermal conductivity to the thermal conductivity is proportional to temperature. Okay. K upon sigma is equal to L into T. Sorry, it is uh, written in bracket. The ratio of thermal conductivity to the electrical conductivity that you should write. Okay, 
is equal to l uh, k upon sigma is equal to l into t where l is the lorentz number okay so if you are taking this t in denominator there you will get k upon sigma t so this ratio is found to be constant which is equal to pi square upon 3 into kb upon e whole square where kb is the boseman constant e is the charge of electron and the value is coming to be this much okay so always the thermal conductivity divided by electrical conductivity into the temperature of the material is a constant okay so this is why man okay <coughs> so that is was free electron theory together with feynman friends law now next is the conductivity derivation of conductivity expression for conductors and semiconductors so i have drawn this figure here uh, consider a conducting wire of length l and cross section area i that dew part it represent the area of cross section through which the current is flowing okay and let uh, the external voltage applied is v across it uh, so in conductors the current is due to electrons so let e is the charge of each electron and n is the concentration of the electrons what is the meaning of concentration it is the number of free electrons per unit volume of that material okay uh, so um, when i am applying electric field uh, when electric field is not applied you will not get any current so on applying this voltage you will get current the current direction is uh, in that way the arrow is shown there because the electrons are uh, uh, um, getting attracted towards the positive terminal so current direction will be opposite to that okay so actually when the electric field is applied uh, the electrons are getting uh, velocity due to external applied voltage that velocity uh, gained by the electrons in presence of external field is called as the drift velocity and that drift velocity is proportional to the electric field strength as the electric field strength is increased if the voltage is increased the electron will move very fast through the material and the drift velocity of the electron will increase so v is proportional to e that is the electric field strength what is the electric field strength applied here it is capital v upon l that is the voltage applied across the wire length divided by the length of the wire okay so v is proportional to e or uh, if i am removing the proportionality term there uh, so i will get a constant which is called as mobility of the electrons mobility means how freely the electrons will move in the material okay so i will get v is equal to mu t into e and e is capital e is v upon l voltage applied divided by length okay so in terms of these parameters concentration of electrons drift velocity i can write the current through the wire as current is uh, Uh, total charge flow in per unit volume so total charge is n into e because uh, charge of each electron is c how many number of electrons are free n so total charge is n e okay and if the drift velocity of the electrons is v uh, per unit time if I, if i want to have this total charge per unit time so what is velocity distance upon time right so i will get time in denominator and that concentration ka upon volume and this uh, distance uh, velocity distance into cross section area they are giving volume term there so that concentration ka denominator volume in this volume will get cancelled so you will get current in terms of v a n as n e v a no need to derive you just remember this formula as it is i is equal to n into e into v into a okay what i want the conductivity expression so conductivity is equal to one upon resistivity somehow if i am getting resistance of the wire i will get that resistance you can see i can write this drift velocity in terms of electric field strength and electric field strength is v voltage so just v is equal to mu e into e i have written in the next step okay and instead of e i am writing capital v upon l so i will get current is equal to n e mu e into v upon l into a so i am getting v upon i is equal to i am taking this i there and all other terms on the other side l upon a the distance unit wise terms jo hai that i am keeping other side and in bracket i am taking one upon n e mu e okay but what is v upon i it is uh, the resistance of the wire from ohm's law so v upon i is equal to r but r in terms of resistivity is rho into l upon a so i am equating these two expressions of r that is l upon a one upon n e mu e and rho into l upon a so l upon a and l upon a will get cancelled so resistivity of the wire is one upon n e mu e but is uh, is inversely related to conductivity so if conductivity is zero uh, sorry sigma i will get sigma is equal to 1 upon resistivity so sigma is equal to n e mu e move per meter units are move so this is the conductivity of conducting wire uh, now i know that the current density is i upon a uh, and current we have seen it is n e mu e into e okay uh, so uh, n e mu e into e into a so a and a will get cancelled so it will be n e mu e into a uh, so current density j 
and in u a i can write the conductivity so j is equal to sigma so this is the current density of conducting wires now next is the conductivity expression for semiconductors first we will derive the general expression for semiconducting materials now for any temperature t the current in semiconducting material it is uh, due to electrons and holes both in general okay so total current to the wire is i e plus i h so again if n e is the concentration of electrons and h is the concentration of holes mu e is the mobility of electrons mu h is the mobility of holes see mobility of electrons and holes is different because electron is a free particle and hole is a vacant site so unless and until electron are not coming and filling that gap it will not get shifted on the other side so always the mobility of holes is very less as compared to mobility of electrons okay uh, so it is mu e and mu h the mobilities okay uh, so in terms of all these parameters electric field applied will be same because the voltage applied across the semiconducting wire is same so in terms of these parameters the total current is r e plus i h which is equal to n e e charge of electrons and holes is same so uh, concentration of electrons into charge of electron into v e that is drift velocity of electron which is different because mobility is different into a cross section area of the wire is same plus n h into concentration of holes into charge of hole into v h drift velocity of holes into a okay so again putting v e is equal to mu e e v h is equal to mu h e i will get in terms of mu e and mu h s i is equal to e into a into bracket n e mu e plus n h mu h into v upon l okay so again i am writing v upon i is equal to l upon a okay and in denominator i will get e n e mu e plus n h mu h but v upon i is equal to r the resistance of the wire okay which is equal to rho into l by so again equating the two expression Uh, in this case, the resistivity is coming one upon e and e mu e plus n h mu. So you just remember that point. Okay, in semiconductors, you are getting um, this current due to two terms, electrons and holes. So in denominator, you are getting the addition of the two factors, n e into e mu e due to two electrons, n h into e mu e due to holes. But conductivity is reciprocal of uh, resistivity. So again, charge of electrons and holes is same. So I am taking that charge common. So in bracket, you will get concentration of electrons into mobility of electrons plus concentration of Goes into mobility of holes. This is the general expression for semiconductors conductivity. But for intrinsic semiconductors, for any temperature t greater than zero, okay, the concentration of electrons and holes is same. So that term I can take common, and that I am writing the intrinsic carrying concentration. So conductivity of intrinsic semiconductors is N I into E into bracket mu E plus mu H. Okay. For n type, as the concentration of electrons is very large as compared to concentration of holes, we can neglect the second term and we get uh, this conductivity of n type as uh, second neglecting that second term n e into e into mu e. And uh, what is n e? It is the concentration of donor atom basically. So n t into e into mu e. Oh, that capital e is not there. It is small e. It must be small e. Okay. Same for p type. Uh, n h is greater greater than n e. So I'm getting uh, the conductivity for p type uh, is equal to e into n h into mu h. So uh, n h is the concentration of acceptor atom. So you get n a into e into mu h. So that should be small e. Huh? Just do that correction in this uh, slide there. Okay. So this is the conductivity expression for conductors and semiconductors. Uh, this derivation is very important. Any one of this may be asked for six months or both of this may be asked for three three months each. Okay, and that is very simple. You just do it, uh, write it down, note it down, and try to solve this. We write this. Uh, the next step at is Hall effect. Okay. Uh, again, this is very important uh, effect which is shown, uh, which was shown in conducting material, and it was given by this scientist. The name is Hall, and uh, uh, actually uh, with this experiment uh, or based on this, there are some experiments with which we can experimentally differentiate in between the given n type or b type of semiconductors. It is possible to Measure the mobility of electrons in the material. The value experimentally mobility of holes in the material. It is possible to know the number of free electrons per unit volume. It is not possible to count the electrons, right? But experimentally, it is possible to measure that value concentration of electrons or concentration of holes in the material at any temperature. That is number of free electrons or number of free holes in the material. so we will see the uh, law is statement that whenever a, a current carrying strip a strip which is carrying a current whenever a current carrying strip of conductor 
or semiconductor is kept in a transverse magnetic field if the current is flowing along x axis if it is kept in transverse means if magnetic field is applied along z axis perpendicular to it okay and electric field is developed in the direction perpendicular to the direction of current and the magnetic field so if current is along x magnetic field is along z then if when this current is uh, on that current if i am applying magnetic field automatically in electric field is generated in the direction perpendicular to this that means it will generate in the direction y now if electric field is developed that means some voltage is developed because electric field is nothing but voltage divided by the thickness of the material in that direction if the thickness of the material is d in that direction the electric field is equal to vh upon d okay uh, so uh, that is hall effect now uh, if i want to derive the expression for hall voltage right because uh, electric field is developed means some voltage is developed across that y direction that is called as hall voltage now so what happens basically uh, when uh, a current is flowing through the material along x axis that means electrons are moving along x axis somewhere okay this electrons are negatively charged particle so when they are kept in magnetic field transverse magnetic field is applied uh, electrons are getting Um, are uh, okay having some velocity when current is flowing in the material they are having some drift velocity of their own so when magnetic field is applied a force magnetic force will act on that electrons what is that magnetic force when it is e in to bracket vd cross b e v b hota hai so it is vd cross b that is cross product of with the drift velocity of the electron and the magnetic field strength okay so what is the direction of that force it is perpendicular to drift velocity of electron and magnetic field strength okay so if uh, velocity of the electron is somewhere along x axis suppose the, when if current is flowing around positive x axis electrons are in negative x axis direction okay and magnetic field is along z axis so if i am rotating from e to b e cross uh, b if i am vd cross b if i am taking now the electrons are pushed toward the negative y direction okay so when the electrons are getting pushed in the negative y direction because of the applied magnetic field the lower surface of the material it is becoming more and more negatively charged with respect to time if the uh, if this current carrying strip is kept for a long time in that magnetic field the electrons are continuously getting towards the lower side of that surface minus y direction of the surface and uh, after some time the lower surface it gets completely negatively charged okay so if once it is getting complete negative charge uh, the further accumulation of electrons on it will get stopped okay so when for, even though the magnetic field is on the current is flowing but it will not in the lower surface it will repel the further accumulation of electrons on it so at that time a constant force uh, voltage is developed in between the upper surface and the lower surface because lower surface is more negative with respect to upper surface potential difference is developed in between the upper surface along the upper and lower surface along the y direction so that potential difference is nothing but the hall voltage okay uh, so an electric field is stored so this when in equilibrium condition we say that the electric field it is balancing the force due to magnetic field okay so we can write force due to electric field is equal to force due to magnetic field in equilibrium condition when the constant voltage is developed there okay what is the force due to electric field it is e into capital e and the magnitude of the force due to magnetic field is vev here we will not take the directions okay because we want to derive expression for for voltage okay Where e is the magnetic field strength, b is the mag, uh, e is the electric field strength, b is the magnetic field strength, b is the drift velocity. So in the next slide, uh, uh, so e and e will get cancelled. So capital E is equal to V into b. What is capital E? It is Vh upon d. If the thickness of the material along the axis is d, so I will get Vh upon d. What is V in terms of current? Initial current flowing through the I is equal to n into e into v into a that we have seen for the conductivity expression. So V is equal to I upon n e a. So instead of that velocity, I can measure current, right? I can't measure velocity, so I will write I upon n e a into b. So Hall voltage Vh is equal to b into I into d upon n e a. what is uh, this uh, ne it is uh, charge density because n is the concentration of electrons per unit volume and e is the charge of electrons uh, each electron so charge per unit volume is nothing but charge density okay number of electrons ke liye kuch unit nahi hota and charge is having full lumps so full lump per unit volume is charge density ro so i can and area of that cross section is w into t where what is w it is the width of the material along z axis so uh, i will get in terms of this parameters the hall voltage expression as v r okay upon n e is charge density so it is rho and i am writing a as w into d d and d will get cancelled so in denominator i will get w so v h is equal to v i upon rho okay
Now, uh, I can write this in terms of current density also because J is equal to I upon A. So, in equation uh, 1, instead of I upon A, I can write J. So, VH in terms of current density is BJD upon root charge density. Now, we'll see the meaning of Hall coefficient. Uh, the reciprocal of charge density is called as Hall coefficient because at any, uh, any given temperature, the concentration of free electrons is constant. Right? So, this term 1 upon Ne or Ne charge density is constant. So, we are representing that constant term by one more term in this experiment that is called as Hall coefficient. So, Hall coefficient is reciprocal of charge density. That is, Rh is equal to, it is denoted by Rh symbol, it is equal to 1 upon Ne. Uh, so, it is equal to 1 upon rho. Okay, so I can write VH is in terms of this RH as one BI upon rho W is the expression for VH. So one upon rho is RH. So I am writing that RH into BI upon W. Okay, so hence RH in terms of Hall voltage is the RH. I am taking all the parameters there. I am getting VH upon B into I into W. Okay, again instead of this, uh, uh, I want to write in terms of electric magnetic field strength and all. So somehow if I am getting VH upon D. VH upon D is electric field strength. So, I can write there capital E. Okay. So, I am writing W as A upon D. Okay. So, I will get VH upon D is equal to E, uh, capital E. Then I upon E is equal to the current density in denominator and magnetic field strength in denominator. Okay. So, I am getting Hall coefficient as electric field strength divided by magnetic field strength into current density. Okay. So, if V is equal to 1, J is equal to 1, I can write the Hall coefficient RH as uh, the electric field strength developed in the material for unit applied magnetic field for uh, when the current density in the material is unit or having unit value. So, this is the Hall coefficient. Now, there are some applications of this. Yeah, this Hall effect experiment, it is very important experiment because experiment it is possible to know uh, the given n type or p type of semiconductors. In case of n type, the charge carriers are electrons. So, the lower surface is getting negative, but in case of p type, the charge carriers are holes. Uh, so, the lower surface will become positive. So, the polarity of that electric present which is developed along y axis, it will change. Okay. Or, uh, we can say, uh, but it is always along y axis. Uh, by direction. So, once in n type the lower surface is becoming negative but in p time the lower surface is becoming positive. So, the electric field direction it is getting changed. Okay. Uh, now, from this expression uh, you can see uh, Vh is equal to Vi upon rho w wala or Vh is equal to Vid upon Ne wala. Okay. Uh, volt, volt, hot voltage we can measure with the help of voltmeter, magnetic field with the help of cross meter, then current with the help of current meter, and dA cross-section area of that strip that we know with the help of linear calipers and all, and charge of the electron value is known. So, by doing this experiment, it is possible to know using this formula, it is possible to calculate the concentration of free electrons. And, okay, so this is very important to know. Uh, one more thing with this experiment, it is possible to know the mobility of the charge carriers. Why? Because you know that conductivity is equal to N E mu and uh, conductivity and uh, N E I can write as uh, uh, N1 upon Rh, right? So I will get uh, Rh into sigma is equal to mu. So mobility is equal to Rh into sigma. Okay, there is a slight mistake is there. So you just do that correction there. Rh of, that must be 1 upon Rh or N E is 1 upon Rh there. So just by measuring this Hall coefficient and knowing the conductivity, it is possible to know the mobility of the charge carriers. Next slide. Okay. So the uh, last part of this uh, chapter or this unit is the construction and working of solar cell. It is it is computed. Uh, this experiment was is there in our first year syllabus, and I think uh, one or two batches. Um, I have completed this experiment. That time I have explained this solar cell. What is solar cell? Okay. So again, so what is a solar cell? You know that it is a device which is used to convert solar energy, that is sunlight energy, into electrical energy. Okay. So it is acting like a cell in presence of sunlight because uh, the light is getting converted to voltage. Uh, so it is getting constant voltage for constant intensity falling on it. Okay. Uh, but if the intensity is increased or decreased, the value of that is change. So it is based on photovoltaic effect. What is the construction of this? It is usually made from a semiconducting material like silicon and we take the anti semiconductor, okay, that silicon layer. And then on that anti semiconductor, a thin layer of P is given. The thickness of P layer is very small. It is 0.2 to 0.5 micrometers. Okay, okay why it is kept very small? That will say later on. But in order to enhance the transmission of the incident, 
on that pillar anti reflection coating of sio2 is there what are anti reflective coatings which will not reflect the incident light they will allow the beam completely to get translated not at all so interference phenomena is used there that we have seen for parallel side of the okay anti reflective coating of sio2 is given in order to connect the device with the external uh, device metal contacts are given on both the side of it that is towards the inside from the bottom of inside substrate and on the sio2 there okay so metal contacts are so this is the construction of this device shown in a left side figure okay working now when this light falls or uh, photons falls on this upper p layer of it due to incident intensity electron hole pair will get generated in the p layer now as the thickness of this p layer is very small the electron hole pair it is getting generated at the junction only when at the junction we are having barrier potential positive ions towards n side and negative acceptor ions to the p side so positive donor ions of n side they will attract the electrons from the p region and the electrons will move towards the n side okay which are created due to incident light okay uh, so they are moving towards the n side and holes are getting accumulated towards the p side the electrons coming from p side towards n side they are getting repelled from the other electrons of the material of n side so they will get accumulated at the junction so due to accumulation of electrons and holes in the device we are getting again some potential difference holes are positive i can say electrons are negatively charged particles so again some potential is difference is developed in the device across the junction that potential is called as uh, this photovoltaic okay uh, so this device it is acting like a, a cell or battery giving constant photovoltaic in presence of constant intensity falling that we can explain this working on the basis of energy band diagram also okay uh, when this pn junction is formed at the junction uh, an energy barrier of height evb is created when the light is falling on the p layer electron hole pair is generated free electrons always lies in conduction band so they are moving up and they are observing reduce energy height there okay uh, towards the n side so they will fall on to that side Okay, and they will get accumulated here. Hmm? So with that we are satisfied. Uh, so we are getting constant voltage. And now if I am not connecting uh, this device with the external resistance or anywhere, if it the two terminals of the device positive and negative terminals of any cell, if they are open, we call it as open circuit. And if I am connecting only voltmeter, I will measure the voltage which is developed there. Okay. So whatever voltage I am measuring, that is also called as open circuit voltage. Okay. So for that voltage, the current value is always zero for open circuit. Voltage and that voltage is actually the photovoltage. Now, if some resistance is connected in parallel with this, okay, it is shown in left side figure there. P and light is falling on P layer. So, if some resistor variable re resistance it is, so if some variable resistance is connected across it, if I can vary that resistance value from some zero to maximum. If I am connecting it to be zero, if I am keeping the value to be zero, so when R is zero uh, in the external circuit, I will measure voltage to be zero. But in that case, the current in the external circuit is very large, and that current when R is zero is called as the short circuit current. So I will get the maximum current there. Okay, and as R is increase, V will increase, and current will decrease. Okay, so in this case, voltage and current they are inversely related. Um, uh, inversely related through R L. Okay, because um, as R is increased, V is increasing, and I and R they are inversely related. So accordingly, if R is increased, current will decrease. So you will get a graph like this shown in figure. On x-axis I am uh, plotting uh, voltage, on y-axis I am plotting current. Uh, so as the voltage is increased, the current is decreasing. And here on uh, y-axis I am getting a short circuit point. Uh, that is the maximum current for which voltage is zero, and on the x-axis I am getting an open circuit voltage for which the current value is zero. So we are getting a graph like this. Okay. Uh, so actually, uh, what is the maximum uh, power? Uh, power in terms of voltage and current is V into I. So maximum voltage which I am having is V O C. That is open circuit voltage. And maximum current is short circuit current I C. So the product of the two is the maximum power. But this is not the operating point because V O C point I am getting for R infinity and uh, I C point I am getting for R zero. So I can draw this power from the solar cell. But actual maximum of power I can draw is if I am dropping what I will do? I will draw an uh, a line uh, from zero of this uh, graph uh, at 45 degrees and if it is cutting this graph uh, iv graph at this point from there if i am dropping a perpendicular i will get uh, the same operating one v max and i max so the product of these two they are getting the actual maximum power which i can have from the solar cell so the ratio of this actual maximum power which we can have uh, which we can deliver from the solar cell and the ideal maximum power that is pi is equal to voc into ic that ratio is called as the field factor okay uh, so in this case this is a 
unitless quantity because if the, it is the ratio of power, it only measures uh, how much uh, value I, or how much gap I have to fill uh, in order to have maximum power output from the solar cell. That is called as the fill factor of the cell. But the efficiency of the solar cell is always different. Efficiency is always output upon input, and what is the output energy? It is the electrical energy, and the input energy is the solar energy. So it is always different. And the fill factor of the cell solar cells are around 21% only, whereas the efficiency is around 50 to 50%. There are some advantages, disadvantages, and applications of solar cell. Uh, the advantages are that it is a clean source of energy, then it is available in large quantity, and it is available in remote places also. So we can deliver the we can have a power output there also in remote places where it is not possible to transmit the power lines or it is not possible to send power from the cities. So it is used to power the satellites, artificial satellites in satellite communication also solar cells are used. Then uh, there are some disadvantages of solar cell that it is a dilute source of energy. Um, it uh, changes uh, according to weather conditions. Uh, the cost is very high because the panels they are making that big big panels is very costly and uh, okay, they uh, need large area. Right? Because the solar panels are not very small, in order to have very high output, you will have to put very large glass this solar cell panels, so they occupy very large area. There are some applications of solar cell uh, which are given nicely in your textbooks. Various applications you know that we are using the solar cell in everyday devices in calcium and in watches, solar cell watches, and also in um, solar plants for powering the pumps uh, in uh, uh, agriculture and on in irrigation purposes and all. So that applications will have to be on your own. You will have to write that as as the this time is getting past it's 45 minutes almost. So with this point I am completing with this part and now uh, I am completing this uh, unit 6 also in this. Uh, we have completed with, uh, we have done a uh, unit 3 in our theory lectures only and I uh, have given all this, I have completed with unit uh, 5, uh, unit 4, unit 5 and unit 6. So actually the theory part of this syllabus is completed, multiples are remaining. So for that part, I am sending some uh, important formulas together with some solved integrals in the next, I am putting my notes also. So that you just go refer through that and have a practice. Solving the That's it for today. Hope you do your studies well. All the best. Bye.